some of you may recognize the airplane that has me surrounded as a restored Balanca Cruise Master, a relic from 1950. I bought this airplane in 1972, and for reasons that even I don't fully understand, I still own it, along with a 1969 Mooney Turbo Executive that regular viewers of Wide World of Flying may remember from previous issues. Just what every pilot needs, two airplanes to support. The Balanca is a classic in every respect. And though most pilots probably know about the next generation Balanca, the Viking, it's probably one of the best kept secrets in general aviation that Vikings are still being produced today. This is the 1992 Balanca Viking 300. A true high-performance retractable, if ever there was one. An airplane that's still built the way Balancas have been built for half a century, by hand. In fact, Balanca is the oldest brand name still in the business of building little airplanes. Though the current company, Balanca Incorporated, has no relationship to the old Balanca Aircraft Company. Today's Super Viking 300 retains all the best of what went before. And the 1992 version represents the best of the best. With a speed in excess of 200 miles per hour, the Viking 300 offers the same or better cruise performance than any other retractable on the market. Excellent climb and the distinction of being one of the world's last hand-built airplanes. The Viking is truly an airplane unlike any other on the general aviation market. It's built of wood, fabric, and tube steel. And in many respects, its construction is actually superior to all aluminum. For at least the last quarter century, Balancas have been built here in Alexandria, Minnesota, the land of real Vikings, America's true Nordic craftsmen, to whom working in wood is an art form that seems to come naturally. The Viking Sitka spruce wing is lovingly crafted from 1,800 tiny pieces of preformed wood, meticulously glued together, covered with plywood and sealed against weathering with both a high quality sealant and aircraft dope. The result is a finished wing that's incredibly smooth to both the touch and the sky. Balanca investigated adapting a composite wing to the Viking and found there were no significant advantages in either weight savings, strength, aerodynamics or cost, so the Viking wing remains essentially the same as it's always been. The entire Balanca Viking, except for the cowling, is covered in Dacron fabric. If properly treated, Dacron can last at least 25 years, and it's far more resilient than aluminum. It's also lighter and easier to repair in the event of hangar rash. Balanca has always had a justified reputation for some of the best interiors in the industry. And that's partially a function of meticulous detail and first-class materials. At only 41 inches across, Balancas aren't the roomiest singles in the sky, but they're certainly among the best upholstered, even including such esoteric items as a ski tube. The airplane comes standard with a full IFR King package of avionics, but if you want more, as most pilots do, there's no limit to what you can install. Our test airplane had a KFC 200 flight director, a new King KLN 88 Loran, a KNS 80 navigation system, and probably a bunch of other things I never found. Building the airplane entirely by hand, it takes Balanca about 120 days to complete a Viking 300. And they do that about eight times a year. That's right, Balanca builds only one airplane every six weeks but Vikings are built unlike any other airplanes in the world. Since 1967, when Balanca introduced the first Viking 300, there have been some 1,300 examples built, the vast majority of them continental powered. And though the basic configuration hasn't changed much, our 1992 version includes a few improvements over what's gone before. The clamshell gear doors have been redesigned for improved aerodynamics and slightly better speed. The fuel system has been revised to accommodate 84 gallons, an extra nine gallons. Hydraulics have been updated to retract the gear quicker, and the maximum gear operating speed has been increased to 139 knots. 
Landing lights have been relocated onto the main gear doors, and Belanca now offers a 36-month or 500-hour warranty. Overall, it's a slick package of airplane with all antennas mounted inside the fuselage, wheels and wings slickly fared, and very little left hanging out to grab the wind. What makes Belanca's so outstanding, however, is the way they fly. And today, we've come up to Mojave Airport in California's high desert to show you just what a 1992 Viking can do. With a 300 horsepower Continental IO 520 out front and only 3,325 pounds of airplane to lift, the Viking's power loading is a mere 11.1 pounds per horsepower, the lowest power to weight ratio of any high performance single I know of. Earlier today, we recorded a maximum effort high performance takeoff from near sea level Compton Airport in the Los Angeles Basin. Here's what it looked like from both inside and outside the airplane. Okay, the procedure on the high performance takeoff is pretty simple. Just power to the stop, see 40 miles an hour, half flaps, and rotate. The high performance takeoff in the Belanca happens so quickly that you have to be prepared to uh, rotate the aircraft as soon as you hit 40 miles an hour or you wind up using more runway than is necessary. Keep in mind, however, that this is regarded only as an emergency procedure to get off a really short strip if you don't have any choice. It's not the sort of thing you'd want to do every day. If you had a power failure during a departure such as that, you'd have to punch the nose over pretty hard in order to avoid stalling the airplane. Let's take another look at that short field takeoff in a long shot to give you a better idea of just how little runway the Viking needs to get off the ground. Here at Mojave's 3,000 foot pressure altitude, we'll keep our takeoff technique a little more conventional. The goal at Compton was to get off and up in the shortest possible distance. But here at Mojave, we'll attempt to maximize climb rate. Despite a boxy fuselage and what some pilots consider antiquated construction, Blancas have always been capable of good cruise speed, and today's Viking is right up there even with, or perhaps a little ahead of, the F-33A Bonanza and all the other normally aspirated big horsepower four-seat retractables. Level at 9,500 feet right here over the Mojave Desert, you can see we're running along at about 144 knots indicated. We're about 170 knots true. And that's uh, consuming about 14 gallons an hour. If you want to save a few bucks on fuel, you could come back to 55%, burn about four gallons an hour less, and still see something on the order of about 150 knots true. In truth, the Viking isn't the most efficient airplane on the market, but that was never the goal. Most pilots don't buy fast airplanes to fly slow, and I'd bet the most popular cruise setting is close to maximum. With 84 gallons on board and a burn rate of about 15 gallons per hour, the Viking has an easy 4.5 hours endurance plus reserve at high cruise, six hours plus reserve at long range cruise. That translates to 900 nautical miles between stops, Seattle to San Diego, or perhaps even New York to Miami nonstop. Admittedly, payload with full fuel is only enough for about three people plus toothbrushes, the same as most other retractables, but you can always offload fuel pounds for people pounds. The greatest joy of Belancas, though, has always been the way they fly. For my money, and yes, as you saw earlier, I did spend some of my money on a Belanca, Vikings have the best control harmony of any single on the market. Both the ailerons and elevators are light and fast. Roll rate is a quick 90 degrees per second, and pitch response is quick and positive making normal maneuvering a sheer joy. 
Every pilot should have the experience of flying a Balanca at least once. In fact, a number of airshow pilots have campaigned Vikings around the airshow circuit for years to prove that wood and fabric can do everything metal can do and more. Airshow pilot Bob Sears flies this solid black Viking all over the country doing maneuvers most folks associate with pits and decathlons. Though the Viking 300 isn't certified for aerobatics, Sears and others have proven it's easily strong enough to withstand the stresses involved. Even if you're confined to the normal flight envelope, the Viking is certainly one of the easiest flying singles there is. Approaches and landings are particularly simple, partially because the Balanca's wing is so forgiving. With its new 139 knot limit speed, the Oleo gear serves as an excellent speed brake. An emergency extension is almost foolproof since the main gear retract forward. In the event of a failure in the hydraulic gear system, you can merely flip the switch to open the clamshell gear doors and let the relative wind extend the main gear down and aft into place. Full flaps are a whopping 46 degrees and reduce the Viking stall speed by a healthy seven knots. Approaches at 75 knots are the norm, but if there's a need to plan it on and stop it short, I'll use as little as 65 knots on approach. Boy, that is fun. Bob Sears must have one of the best jobs in the world campaigning a Viking around the air show circuit. As mentioned earlier, Balanca builds only about a half dozen of these airplanes each year, all by hand. And that might lead you to expect a hellacious price tag. Not so. Base price is just under $146,000, including full King IFR avionics. Add all the other items most pilots normally buy, and you'll probably spend about $175,000 for a fully equipped Viking. No more than you'd invest in a comparably equipped Bonanza or Mooney 201. Price may not be the major consideration for buyers of Balanca's magnificent wood and fabric pterodactyl, however. Like all designs, the Viking isn't perfect, but it has a certain indefinable charisma that effectively transcends considerations of performance and efficiency. The Viking isn't for every man, nor would Balanca want it to be. By any measure, the Balanca Viking 300 is one of General Aviation's last preeminent symbols of individuality.